Welcome to the 700 Club Canada. I'm Brian Wall. And I'm Laurel and Tyler Thompson. It's great to be with you today. You know, mm -hmm. Brian, I was wondering, um, in your football career, you spent a few years doing yes. that, professional football. Um, was there like one team that, that you ever went up against and it seemed like you just could never beat them? You know what? Um, it seems like at every stage there's always a team like that. Yeah. When I was playing with the Buffalo Bills mm -hmm. and I was only about eight years old, we used to come out. Okay. And we used to come out on the field and they had this team called the South Stars and they yeah. were like bigger than us. <laughs> And we struggled, but we came out of that yeah. uh, on top. And when I was playing in the CFL, the Calgary Stampeders, when they went to a run-and-shoot offense and Doug mm -hmm. Flutie was playing here, he was thrown off his back foot. I know you probably don't know what I'm talking about. I don't. But it was hard to get to him. Yeah. But uh, we won the Great Cup in 91, so, you know, we overcame. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. That's a good story. Today you'll see three incredible stories of people who got their own breakthrough. And even if you don't like football and you've never played... And if you're struggling with an issue today, guest speaker Lloyd Hartshorn has an encouraging message for you not to lose hope. That's right. So if you're wondering if prayer really works, have a look at what happened to Lisa after two years of struggling with pain. Watch. <laughs> when my knee first started hurting, it wasn't all that bad at first. It was just painful. It was getting worse and worse with each day and each week, ongoing for about two years. When I would go up and down the stairs, I would have to go good leg first down and good leg first going up. It would wake me up in the middle of the night. It seemed like there was never a good night of sleep. The pain got so severe that we had to get a brace that had what I called stilts. And it just gave me much more support, kept my legs straighter so that I wouldn't have to bend it any. It, the pain was still there. I knew the minute that I went in to see an orthopedic, he was gonna say, you're gonna have to have surgery. There's nothing that's gonna help that except going and getting it operated on. I just kept saying, I can't do that yet. My husband needs me more. My husband was a state trooper and he had had an accident. Afterwards, he had had eight surgeries. I just couldn't be down with my own self and not be able to take care of him. I would pray and I would, I would just say, God, please, you know, I know that you're hearing me. One of my very favorite verses is in 2 Kings. And it says, I have heard your prayers and I have seen your tears and I will heal you. And I'm thinking, God's gonna heal me. God's gonna heal me. It may take a while, but God's gonna do it. So July 27th, I was doing some work and watching the 700 Club. All of a sudden, I hear... There's someone you're watching, you heard the report about the left knee, and you're going, my left knee is, he is hurting. Can I be healed? And the answer for you is, yes, you can. Right now, just lay your hand on that knee and receive miracle healing into it in Jesus' name. And I just started praying, and I started praising God. You know, that's my healing. You know, I grabbed my knee, and I was just... I said, that's mine, that's for me. It took about two days. My knee was healed in that two days. And I could come down the steps with no pain. Uh, I could walk, uh, I could go to the mailbox, I could take the dogs out, I could stand in the kitchen. I knew, I, I had no doubt that the Lord had his hand on this. There was no doubt in my mind at all. Don't ever doubt God's word. Don't ever think that God will lie because God does not lie. And God makes promises to us and we have to understand it may not be in our time, but it is in his time. 
Laura and I love that, Laura Lynn, because Lisa, uh, she believed God, and it was at that moment that God answered. Yes. I find that's how easy it is, because, you know, when we're dealing with spiritual issues, yeah. there's no distance with God. So right. geographically, when you believe that word, mm. immediately it begins to take hold in right. your life. Absolutely. Yes. You know, uh, that's happened on our show as well. Uh, you over know, over and over. Yes. yes. Uh, as we pray for people and, uh, it's a blessing, yes. um, that we absolutely believe that when we combine our faith, the word says that we're two or three, you actually yeah. give us the three <laughs> where right. we come into agreement to believe as touching anything that God will hear us. Well, actually the, the third one, and this is the beautiful thing because a quarter three is not easily broken. When we touch and agree, yes. God is in the midst because mm -hmm. if you are a believer and I'm a believer, mm -hmm. then God literally, Jesus said, I will be there. Mm -hmm. And I believe that now as we nice. pray for you that God is going to do that same thing. Yes. Let's touch and agree. Mm -hmm. And uh, Father, I, I thank you that, Lord, I heard that someone's inner ear, they were battling their right ear, they could not hear. That's being healed mm -hmm. right now, it's mm -hmm. popping. In Jesus' name, hmm. amen. Amen. And further to that, anyone that's feeling like they, a fog in, the, in their brain where it's mm -hmm. hard to think sometimes and you feel like you're just pressing through cotton, I pray, Father, that you would just touch that person right now in the name of Jesus and that you would bring healing, oh God. Oh, yes. We trust you to do what only you can do in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, hmm. amen. Amen. I believe that. Hey, if that's you, call the number on the screen and let us know. We'd love to celebrate with you. 1 855 759 0700. High five. Boom. High five. After the break, see how Shelly was suddenly healed from a serious shoulder injury. Go, God. The man I've been working with was on his knees above my body, but on each side of him was a huge angel. He seemed to just emerge through the door and float it out on, on the ground. She started pointing and she was saying monster. Discover the truth in Pat Robertson's latest DVD, Angels, Their Power, Purpose, and Presence. These magnificent beings have awesome power beyond our comprehension. In this DVD, you'll gain biblical insight into these mysterious creatures. Learn their purpose in God's kingdom and their role in your life. Plus, meet people who've had real encounters with angels. God sent an angel to pull Lisa out of that car. You're going to be a believer by the time this is finished. Call now to get your copy of Angels. Available now. in an auto accident. The airbags deployed and pinned my arm and it dislocated my shoulder at that time. I think I was in shock <laughs> for the most part. Um, I noticed about two or three days later was when I really started having a lot of pain and noticed that I had no mobility at all in my shoulder. So I just figured I was just gonna be sore. So I just hoped, I guess, that it would get better. Um, I did physical therapy for a little while um, and it was not getting any better. It made a lot of things very, very difficult. Um, I wasn't even able to pick my kids up. I couldn't lift anything. I couldn't move my arm up over my head at all. I mean, I could barely go about this far, and then it was just excruciating. Just putting on my shirt in the morning was a task. Now, until I was released by my doctor, I wasn't even allowed to show up on call. Because, I mean, I could hold the clipboard on scene and do minor little things, but if something happened on scene and a patient you know, got sicker or, you know, we had to do any kind of CPR, I wouldn't have been able to help. I would have just been, you know, standing there or in the way more than I was helping. And my chiropractor had referred me to my primary care doctor for an MRI. Um, when he read the MRI, he said that I had a labral tear and that my rotator cuff was torn. And then he referred me to an orthopedic surgeon for further consult. He said that surgery was the only way to repair it, that my shoulder was slipping in and out of the joint because the labrum was torn and it's, you know, that's what holds your, your shoulder socket in. I was at the Sunday morning service, praise and worship service. Um, Ashley, um, our praise and worship leader, she started immediately speaking to me, telling me that God does not want me to be in pain and that he wants to take this pain away from me. I knew that it was a message from God. Everybody kind of gathered around me and laid their hands on me and started praying. and. 
I immediately just felt this sense of peace. Um, I started feeling this warm sensation. It started creeping from my fingertips and just moving up my arm. Um, and the more that we prayed and the longer that we prayed, the farther up it went. There's no more pain, I could move, you know, I just, it was just warm, tingly feeling that just creeped all the way up my arm. For months, I couldn't even raise it up over my head. Before I left there, I was completely moving it around. And I could move it, I could raise it up. It was wonderful. I went, September 15th was my surgical consult follow-up and the, the next step was surgery. That's when they um, revealed the results of the MRI and they found absolutely nothing. That was the, the final confirmation that there was healing. And I just kept saying, praise God, thank you. It's all I could, I mean, there's never enough thank yous, I don't think, for something like that. They put me through um, seven weeks of physical therapy just to strengthen. After that, I was back at it. I shared it with my fire chief. I just think everybody's glad that I'm back. And I've been a Christian. I, I believe in God and believe in all of his miracles. And this just, this was my personal miracle. Put your faith in God. Always put your faith in God. There's nothing he can't do. He can do anything. He can heal anybody. He can heal anything. I'm living proof that he does. What an incredible story. You know, there was a word from the Lord that came to Jeremiah uh, back in Jeremiah 33. It says, while Jeremiah was still confined in the courtyard of the guard, the word of the Lord came to him a second time. This is what the Lord says. He who made the earth, the Lord who formed it and established it, the Lord is his name. Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things that you do not know. And down in verse six, it says, nevertheless, I will bring health and healing to you. I will heal my people and will let them enjoy abundant peace and security. You see, Jeremiah got a revelation of who God was, that he is great. He is not a small God, that he cannot take care of the things that are going on. You know, God even said, Moses, do you think that my arm is too short to help you? What are you facing today that you need to rise up in faith and know that God is able? He created the heavens and all that is in them. Do you not think that he can handle your situation today? I have seen it over and over in my life where God has touched people as, as the people of God began to pray and there have been miracles that have been reported and things that have happened that cannot be explained by any earthly source. There is a God who does intervene in our lives. And uh, you know, you might be asking that question, can I be healed? I would love to get this into your hands. Give us a call, 1-855-759-0700. There are prayer partners standing by. They will send this out to you absolutely free. It is full of encouragement and scripture. It talks about God's position on healing for today, does he heal today? He absolutely does. If you need that kind of faith and you need that kind of inspiration, a little bit of strength for the journey, give us a call. All right, well, stay with us because coming up, author and speaker, my good friend, Lori Hartshorn, is here with a message that will restore your hope. Don't miss it. Have you ever felt like giving up? I mean, that's kind of a redundant question because of course you have. We all have been in that place. I can tell you that one of the most difficult seasons in my life for both me and my husband were we had three teenagers running from God, drugs, alcohol, parties, just uh, all kinds of scenarios going on, feeling like failures as parents, struggling and on so many levels feeling like giving up. I mean, feeling like giving up even on our parenting, but more importantly, really feeling like giving up walking with Jesus. 
I mean, I, my husband and I found ourselves in a counselor's office, which is a great place to be. And the counselor turned to us and he said, you know, let me tell you a story about a family. And he said, this mom and dad and this young teenage girl came in his office and the teenage girl was dressed in her gothic black wear and her white makeup and is really belligerent. And he was trying to sort of work things out as a family and he wasn't getting anywhere. So he asked the parents to leave the room. And as the parents left the room, and he shut the door and he turned around to look at this young lady. She was crying. And he said, why are you crying? After she had gathered herself together, she looked at him and said, I wish they hadn't given up. I wish they hadn't given up? What was she talking about? I said to the counselor, what did she mean by that? And he looked me right in the eye and he said, she began to tell him that her parents were leaders in the church, they loved Jesus, that she was raised in the church, that as a young girl she'd given her heart to Jesus, but through her rebellion, through her running, her parents had given up, in her mind, of following the Lord. They'd left their church, they'd stopped serving, they were so down and depressed because of her rebellion that they had given up. She said, I wish they hadn't given up. Well, I just literally sat up on that counselor's chair and I'm like, are you kidding? And he, the counselor said to my, my husband and I, your kids do not want you to give up. Well, somebody today needs to hear that. You know what, people in our lives, they, they run, they have their own journeys. We have to release them and let God deal with them. But we cannot give up on being faithful to follow our Lord. And you know what, it, it can be a very discouraging place, but here's a verse that really helped me. Galatians 6 verse 9 says, Let us not grow weary in doing good. For at the proper time, not the time that you might think is the proper time, <laughs> that's a whole other discussion. We want it today. God says, at the proper time, in His economy, with His perspective, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Did you hear that? You will reap a harvest if you do not give up. Our tendency is to give in and to give up, to feel in some ways if our family is struggling that we are no, no longer qualified to lead, we are no longer qualified to serve. Well, that is a lie from the pit of hell. And Jesus says, you be faithful to me, I will be faithful to you. And in due time, you keep doing what is right, in due time, you will reap a harvest if you do not give up. Give God your fears, give Him your failures, give Him your questions and your struggles. Be the person God designed you to be. Do what He asked you to do. Do not give up. And I can tell you, your kids do not want you to give up. In proper time, there will be a harvest for you and your family. I'm Lori Hartzler. Rebecca Wofford has always loved the open road. Next to my children, and of course my Jesus Christ comes first, it's my motorcycles that I love to ride. I taught my grandchildren how to ride, how to fix their own Harley, what a ranch is. But riding her motorcycle and all other activities came to a sudden halt in September 2017. When I woke up on Labor Day morning, I had an excruciating pain that was going across the left side of my lower back. And it scared me. And then when I couldn't move, it scared me even more. I thought it was a... Um, a sciatic nerve and then it would have to work out, you know. So I didn't go to the doctor. What upset her even more was that her granddaughter's wedding was just a few days away and Rebecca was to perform the ceremony. I started talking to God and then I started getting upset because I said Friday is when Mary Jane's getting married and this just cannot happen. And I thought, oh, if it is, it takes a month or two to leave. What am I going to do? Rebecca rested her back as much as possible and kept praying for relief. I could not bend over. I could not stand up. There was no way I could tie my shoes. I mean, I couldn't comb my hair. I couldn't do anything. And so I was really stressed out. But then the Lord would remind me of Matthew 6, 
And he says that worrying is a sin. Still in pain Wednesday morning, Rebecca turned on the 700 Club. There's someone right now, you've been uh, experiencing severe back pain in the left side of your back. God's touching you right now, you're being healed. And I thought, oh, she's talking about me. I was shocked. Like, oh, what in a thing wrong with me? Absolutely nothing wrong with me. I put my hands in the air. I thanked God. Without back pain, she was able to perform and celebrate her granddaughter's wedding. And I got to read God's word and, and watch this beautiful thing unfold right before my very eyes. It was an honor. Rebecca was also able to get back on the road with her husband, Jay. No pain to this day. God still does miracles today. And he did it for me. I just love Rebecca's spirit. And uh, a grandmother that enjoys riding a Harley, yeah. <laughs> and officiating over her granddaughter's wedding, that was, I, I, I'm sure, one of her highlights. You know, so often we, uh, we have those issues in our life and we begin to fixate on them so much. And Rebecca said that worry is a sin and that's what the Bible tells us. That's exactly what the Bible says because it, it goes on to say in Matthew chapter 6, it says, Do not worry, verse 25, for your life, what you will eat, what you will drink, or for your body, what you will put on. Is life more than food and the body more than clothing? I wonder if that's striking a nerve right now because often what God does is he, the greater miracle is not necessarily healing you, but giving you peace in the midst of the storm before you come out so you could have a testimony. No test, no testimony. If you're going through the test right now, I want to get something into your hands, answered prayer, but uh, it'll give you some prayer fuel to keep on working through in this process. But I believe that God is going to do something right now in your life. That's what we believe at the 700 Club Canada. Jesus speaks today. Even while I was watching his testimony, I just felt like the Spirit of the Lord said that someone's been struggling with these chronic headaches, these migraines. If that's you right now, Father, I thank you that, Lord, that disruption has been lifted by the blood of Jesus and the finished work of the cross. And I thank you, Father, that your word said that we simply must agree with you and it is done in Jesus' name. If that's you, call the number on the screen. I'm so excited for you. 1-855-759-0700. Prayer partners are standing by. If you need a little extra prayer fuel, call. It's yours for the asking. Well, when we return, we'll look at your prayer request and pray for your breakthrough. Don't go away. Too often, we carry baggage from our past. You know what it's like. It affects everything and everyone in our lives. It's always there, weighing us down and keeping us from achieving true happiness. But do you know God never meant for us to be trapped in the past? You can be free of your baggage. Learn how God's forgiveness leads to changed lives and new beginnings. Call the 700 Club. Welcome back. We want to give a big shout out to one of our great ministry partners, Metro Kids Society. This organization is dedicated to helping inner city kids. And with your faithful partnership together, we're able to support this ministry. Mm -hmm. They provide programs for kids like the Saturday morning program, Kids Club, which includes games, songs, and teaching about the positive things of life. And they also use Superbook to help teach about the Bible and God's love. And their work can continue because of your 700 Club mm. Canada partnership. Mm. Please give us a call today. Join the team and we'll send you this DVD. It's that easy to make a difference in the life of a child. 1-855-759-0700. God bless you. God bless you. And we really appreciate this part of the program when we get an opportunity to pray with you and for you. Would you put on your prayer list, Muhammad? He's from Edmonton and he's praying for financial breakthrough. And uh, Alawiyah. 
Yeah. Beautiful name. From Toronto, Physical and Spiritual Breakthrough. Uh, let's touch and agree. Mm. Father, we just bring Alawiya before you, Jesus. We ask for this breakthrough, for this strength that she needs. Father, you, you are her God. You are her source. You are her strength and hope. We pray, oh God, that she would just be filled with faith today, knowing that you have seen her, you have heard her, and you have even called her name today, oh God, in honor of her, letting her know that you, you surround her. You uphold her with your love in Jesus' name. Amen. And Father, we touch and agree with Muhammad and we ask you, according to 1 John, that he would prosper even as his soul prospers. Lord, he needs a breakthrough in his finances. So we're praying that you would open a door right now that he could walk through that no one could close and you'd shut doors behind him of poverty and lack that no one could open. Do it, God, because you're this, that kind of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. You know, we, uh, we've we been talking about breakthroughs, and we want to mm -hmm. leave you with a great power verse today. Uh, it's found in Matthew 7, 7 and 8. Mm-hmm. And there's a breakthrough for you. That's one of the things that we want to give you. We want you to stand on this, this Bible verse. We want you to hold on to that. Okay. Because as you've heard today, whether it's... Uh, financial, whether it is health related, no matter what it is, there's a breakthrough for you today. That's what we believe here at the 700 yes, Club do. Canada. You know, it's so here. wonderful that we get an opportunity to, to minister into that across the airwaves yeah. uh, in Canada. But at the same time, one of the things that I've found that because Laura Lynn and I are going through those things ourselves, that God has given us breakthrough. Mm. We have a faith and a confidence as we touch and agree that he's going to give you your breakthrough yeah. as well. And you know, the longer that you serve him, you see some breakthroughs and then yes. you have this track record of what God does. It's, it's faith building, you yes. know? So then you can go, you hit the next obstacle in your path and you say, but I remember that God got me through that last, you know, yeah thing that I didn't think I was going to be able to get through. One thing that I've learned in ministry over the years with the Lord walking for over 30 something years with him is that it's better to have a short memory or excuse me, a short pencil than a long memory. So you got to write down the breakthrough because yeah. what he's done in the past, he can do again. He can. Hey, hold on to this Bible verse, Matthew 7, 7, it says this, 7 and 8, ask and it will be given to you, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. That's your promise. Stand on it. Until next time. To contact us, phone 1-855-759-0700. You can email us at cba at 700club.ca. You can now like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter or Instagram.